In this quick video, we are going to go over the differences between newly released AWS Application Composer service and already tried and tested existing service AWS Step Functions. We are going to go over what each service do and how it works by showing quick demos, as well as the differences in the output artifacts. Let's get started. So on the left on my screen, I have AWS Application Composer open, and on the right, I have Step Functions Visual Workflow open. Both these services have some similarities. Both services allows you to drag and drop service icon and create workflow, but there are differences. So let's start with those. Let's start with Application Composer. Application Composer allows you to create architecture and creates the output SAM template, or you can think of it as a CloudFormation extension template for those serverless architecture. Let's say you want to create a serverless microservice using API Gateway and Lambda. You can simply drag API Gateway from the left panel to the middle, and let's say the backend is Lambda, you drag and drop, then you connect these two services. And let's go one step further. Uh, you are going to use DynamoDB as the database. You can drag and drop DynamoDB. You can connect these two. This is the infrastructure as code service. So this is not going to generate the Lambda function for you. But since you connected these two, what it will do is it will generate the IAM role that's needed to be attached to this Lambda function so that it will have access to the DynamoDB table. Um, so this is one example, and you can click each of this and you can go change some stuff such as for Lambda function, you can change the runtime, uh, let's say Python 3.8, my favorite runtime, you can change the architecture between x86 or Graviton, package type, etc. Let me make this a little bigger. Now one cool thing is, as you create these services, if you click template, it actually generates the AWS CloudFormation templates. Uh, specifically, it creates in the SAM or serverless application model. So if you just take this whole template and run it in CloudFormation, this will actually stand up this architecture. But as I said before, this is infrastructure as code generator. So it is not going to create the Lambda code for you. In that template, there will be a placeholder for the Lambda code that you need to provide. So this is one example. Uh, you can keep dragging and dropping. Let's say you drag Kinesis Stream. You don't need to connect it. Uh, you want to uh, create this microservice. Also, you want to create this Kinesis Stream separately. So if you go to template and scroll down, uh, see it creates this Kinesis Stream. So one of the cool thing this App Composer does is it can connect to your uh, IDE. So you could see on the top left, it is connected. So let's let's start from beginning. Let's say open or create project, new blank project, connected, and then you select folder. And I'm going to open up the folder. Let me make this smaller. All right. So on the left, I have the App Composer, and on the right, I have the Visual Studio code, and these two are connected. Uh, so if I scroll down, so you could see this Kinesis stream here, so let me go on the left and delete it. See, it went away. Let me make this a little bigger. Let's say I want to delete this Lambda function. So if I scroll up, delete, see the Lambda function went away. So now this thing is only going to create uh, this API gateway and DynamoDB table. Now, one thing to note about App Composer is not everything is supported yet. So for example, in AWS, uh, your API gateway can directly put objects into S3 bucket and fetch it from S3 bucket directly without a Lambda function in between. Uh, so if you want to try that, let's say API gateway to S3 bucket and connect this to, it says fail to connect API to bucket connection from API route to object store, not yet supported. However, it will create the API gateway API and the S3 bucket. The only part that's missing is the API interacting directly with the S3 bucket. So you can uh, keep dragging in stuff and you could see that uh, on the right, it keeps going up. So let me just scroll down. This part is kind of fun. Let's say I want to create a SQSQ. Here we go, QSQSQ. Uh, let's say I want to create another S3 bucket. Here we go, another S3 bucket, etc. All right, so now uh, let's divert our attention to uh, step function on the right. So in step function, 
everything is done via the step function. So step function is the centerpiece. It shows start and end. And uh, with step functions, you have various steps and you can drag and drop and tell what kind of uh, action should each step takes. So let's say uh, you want to invoke a lambda first in the step function. And then uh, based on the output of the lambda, you want to check whether uh, a particular value of a field matches something or not. So you can drag and drop this choice state. Uh, let me make this center. And if let's say a particular value uh, matches something, if it is yes, then you want to run a task in ECS. And for the other side, uh, you want to uh, publish something to SNS topic. Uh, so you can click this and fill all these rules and everything. So right off the bat, the big difference, step function, you are only defining this state machine where you define, go ahead and define each state. You cannot create all architectures related to serverless. For example, you cannot create a microservice using just API Gateway, Lambda, DynamoDB, like we were able to do with App Composer. Also, App Composer only deals with serverless services. So on the left, if you look at the resources, it only has the serverless services, but remember, step function can call non-serverless services such as ECS, EC2, Elastic Load Balancer, etc. Uh, so you could do all that uh, using step function. Now, other big differences with App Composer, we saw it creates the full template, and you can literally take this and run it in CloudFormation. It will generate uh, this architecture with step function. It will just give you the step function definition. You have to take that and then plug it into your CloudFormation template. Uh, so let me show an existing step function because that's easier. Let's say I have this validate account number step function. I'm going to edit it in Workflow Studio. Click definition. So this is the definition. If you just copy this whole thing and run it in CloudFormation, it will fail. What you need to do is copy this step function definition from the right and on the left, I am showing a sample AWS CloudFormation template where you have to plug this state machine definition into this definition string. So either you can copy this whole thing and paste it in the definition string, or you can save this definition into S3 bucket and then point that uh, to this uh, step function definition so that you don't have to copy paste this long thing. Now you can mix and match these two. So remember, step function visual workflow creates the state machine definition. If I go back to the application composer, you can drag and drop the step function state machine, which is going to create the infrastructure as code to create a step function with uh, blank steps. So it is not going to fill up what this step function is going to do. You can get this cloud formation. So if I open up template, it created this state machine, but the state definition is blank, right? There is nothing here. It just says start and done. So you can copy the definition from the AWS step function and then fill it up here to create the full template. All right, but both services are uh, quite cool. So give it a try. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully this was helpful. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.